out of the blue contains Athro Bird to Athro Dog TF, MTF Oc Transfer 2024 Story Number 1, Loop, Commission for Chester. Chirp, chirp a broken bar tweet a broken bar as I could hear the idyllic sounds of my fellow birds around me. I stretched out my arms and legs in anticipation of another great day ahead of me. After all, another day meant another new dimension I could travel to. The thrill of journeying to all these new locales hadn't yet worn off, and despite me being new to this dimension traveling thing, I think I've really gotten the hang of it. This last dimension, for example I really scored with this. Every animal from the deer to the wolves had these peculiar pastel colors and were docile to a fault and all the trees shone with this bioluminescence that admittedly made for the most comfortable night light. Truth be told, I could stay in a place like this forever. Alas, as with any other dimension hopper's life, I felt the need this morning to jump into somewhere new. I guess chasing the thrill of new places is just in our blood, and I felt ready to deal with anything that was on the other side as I entered the portal I'd created into the next world. That being said, I still needed to focus as I entered a new world, because to do so I needed to pass through empty space. Every half-decent dimensional traveler needs to be prepared to shield themselves from the antimatter that it encompasses. I've heard horror stories of people being killed by mere exposure to it, and my life fortunately could form an intermatter barrier that could withstand both matter and antimatter safely. I had to put my full attention to keeping it active. Or a, a, a coup. Immediately, I panicked. I'd just heard the barrier drop. I'd made the biggest mistake a dimensional traveler could make. In those blurry few moments, I made a desperate attempt to drift into the closest dimension I could find. Yet I could already feel the little twinges of antimatter start to brush me. Not even in the moment could I anticipate the sensation that this antimatter brought the closest I could compare it to was being put in a trash compactor while simultaneously being stretched like taffy. Nevertheless, when I opened my eyes again, I was funny and not a feather was out of place. Sure, I had no idea where I'd ended up in my hasty retreat. But wasn't that the case every time I hopped to a new dimension? The most I could gather from my surroundings was that this definitely was a kid's room of broken bar kids that evidently really liked space, given all the starry decals and planetary decorations that adorned the walls. I couldn't exactly blame them, thought Ua I know when I was a kid I couldn't shut up about what was in space. Past that, I placed a hand on my chin. Wondering what was my next move going forward. A broken bar weight. I wasn't supposed to have hands, at least, aside from the ends of my wings that I could hold things with, which upon further reflection were essentially hands themselves, but these were, like, hands hands. The tips of my wings were quickly shrinking down, bones and muscle compressing themselves into these tiny, four-fingered appendages that didn't even seem as dexterous as the ones I had previously. Upon closer inspection, they kinda seemed like kids a, a broken bar and I just had to open my mouth there. I was turning into whatever kid this room belonged to, right? They hadn't completely reformed yet and I still felt late to the realization. Must have been whatever witchcraft that antimatter did to me, I bet. If it was any concession, none of the sensations I was undergoing so far were necessarily painful, they were just a broken bar uncomfortable to look at. It was like my mind was anticipating pain that wasn't truly there. Moreover, each individual feather was reshaping itself, thinning out to be a soft follicle of hair. The light cyan hue admittedly wasn't a departure from the colors I sported previously. But no amount of complementary colors could stop the realization that whoever this kid was, they sure weren't a bird. I could see this renegade patch of sky blue fur run its way up my arm, with the childish proportion soon to follow. Feeling every part of my arm simultaneously crunch down all at once was enough to get me wobbling around because the rest of my body hadn't caught up to the change yet, and I tried with every fiber of my being to not fall down. Mostly because I wasn't very sure in these arms yet that they could even pull me up from having fallen down. They were just these unwieldy tubes of limbs that barely left my sleeves. I knew it was going to take a while to not try to fall back on my long, slender wings for balance. Once I could feel those squeezing sensations leave my arms, I could now feel them entering my torso. And if they weren't off-putting before they were certainly off-putting now. More than anything, 
It felt like I was being squished onto a ball with how much height I was losing. I was bound to get vertigo, seeing everything around me get taller in real time. It was truly putting that bit of fear within me, feeling my own body start to reverse in development into a more feeble form like this. Hell, looking down at my scarf falling off. I didn't even have a neck anymore. My head must have been directly attached to my body at this rate, which was something I had absolutely zero interest in seeing. As my vest fell off, the true speed at which this fur was taking over my body was making itself known. Admittedly, it did look kinda nice in a color palette kind of way, with the splotch on my stomach that was the same color as my hands and those dark blue spots that I could barely see forming on my back. But I definitely wasn't used to seeing it yet, especially coupled with my still unchanged legs. Thankfully, all of that was done, though that was only giving way to the changes heading both up and down my body from there. Of the two, my head was the part that was jumping out to me immediately, as I could feel the changes thrumming up my throat and whatever was left of my neck. Oh no, my beak. I held my hands up, not only to feel the changes happening firsthand. But because in the two seconds it took for that sentence to leave my mouth my voice had heightened by several octaves and to a range that was most certainly not male anymore. Even for a kid, it was high. Back to my mouth, the hard keratin of my beak was softening into pure flesh and blood, pushing out further into a small muzzle with a wet dog nose at the end of it. Well, at least I could pinpoint what I was becoming now. At least, the next moment, I could feel teeth growing in and I was ready to freak out right there. Every day of my life has been one without teeth, and now that I had them, I wasn't exactly convinced that a lifestyle with these tiny, squared bits jutting out of my skull like this was necessarily better. I'd half a mind to try to get them out, they were so weird, but I wasn't prepared to find out if whoever this girl was had gotten all her adult teeth yet. As the changes spread outward on my face, a lot of the spiky feathery shaping was smoothing out to make way for much of the same squared off body type that was on my torso. At this point, I wasn't surprised if I'd become this box of a dog a broken bar thing a broken bar whatever this was. I didn't exactly have time to reflect on that fact, seeing as my ears, which were previously tucked away and hidden, perked up as cartilage was propping them up to stand as two triangles atop my blue furred head. My eyes could be felt growing on my face as my field of vision became ever so slightly more vivid. As the tiny eyebrows I had also started to grow out, inexplicably drifting off my head, like I could still feel them. They were just a broken bar off my face. You know, I'm really not going to ask questions about how this species operates. I was just begging for all this transformation stuff to be over as the changes hit my legs. But I could feel that they needed to finish a certain job first. The very last of my feathers on my tail were quickly shrinking back, immediately to be replaced with one that was more properly developed with bone, muscle, and bluish fluff. With a certain mental effort, I could get this altered appendage to wag around, I guess befitting a dog, and all things considered. I didn't mind it all too much. There were certainly about half a dozen other things I was worried about more compared to this. For example, my legs. It was one thing to have my feathers be overwritten with this pillage, but another thing entirely to have the scaly texture of my legs be graced with that same feeling. Whatever I was feeling about it, though, my body sure wasn't caring. Another foot or so was knocked out of my height within seconds as the limbs became as childish and dinky as the rest of my body. As the changes hit my talons, however, it was finally enough to make me fall flat on my face. It was just the quick rate at which each toe shrank, the claws receding into nothingness, and my overall footprint becoming that much smaller. All of it at once was just enough to put me off balance. As I lay there on the floor, I wasn't injured in any way but I still felt like crying. Maybe it was just out of sheer shock at how much I'd transformed in the past few minutes as a broken bar oh no. Maybe I really am turning into a key to broken bar I needed to collect myself for a second. My name is Karth K. Rulum a broken bar I'm a righto who recently started hopping through dimensions a broken bar the last I remember was coming in from this neon looking force the broken bar okay. Phew. At least all the crucial stuff was coming to mind. Bluey, 
Are you ready? We're almost going to be late. I could hear the voice of who was presumably this kid's mom at the other end of the door. Okay. Now uh, I was really out of my element. It wasn't like I assumed this kid was an orphan or anything, but the realization that, yes, I'd have to try to talk to this kid's family as if I wasn't dropped into their form like it was nothing was, like, the sixth realization hitting me like a truck today. Despite how out of the loop I was on every facet of Bluey's, or whatever her name was, life. I needed to press on and try to blend in. I certainly didn't need more of a fuss from this. As I opened the door, the rest of her family were there to greet me. Upon my first look a broken bar, hey, at least I could easily distinguish between them. She had a mom, dad, and little sister. It certainly helped that for two out of three of them, I didn't even need to refer to them by name. Why were you in there? I thought you were in the living room just now a broken bar her younger sister asked in that uniquely childish concerned tone. Oh, I forgot to a broken bar close the blinds, I replied. Really, me? Closing the blinds was your best response to that? Hmm, you sure you're feeling alright? You sound a bit a broken bar her father was equally concerned. Okay. I thought my voice had gotten plenty high enough from the transformation, but my speaking cadence was still that of my old self. Guess I needed to make it even higher, if that was even possible. Ahima broken bar yes, I'm feeling good a broken bar you know, for having literally zero frame of reference for what voice Bluey even spoke with. I didn't think I did that bad, at least the rest of the family was tentatively going with it. A broken bar okay. Why didn't I respond with a no? Maybe I could have bypassed going to wherever we were going a broken bar on the other hand. Though, that would have meant I was sick to the rest of the family and I'm sure that's a can of worms unto itself. Hopefully, this was a trip to the mall or somewhere else that was basic and impersonal. We all made it down the stairs and to the door, and along the way, I observed every background detail I could of this kid's life. A broken bar from all these photos on the wall, they were certainly school age, they had a couple of friends, and what looked to be other family members. I hoped they were cousins, because I certainly wasn't going to push my luck with another family member to interact with. Um, Bluey a broken bar what was with those clothes in a room? Her younger sister asked again. I was so caught up and thought that all I could respond with was an offhand I don't know. And besides another confused look I was able to shake that question off. Truth be told, I had no idea what I was going to do with those for the moment. After getting into the car, I still couldn't shake off the surreal feelings of just how small I was now. I had to sit in a booster seat, for crying out loud. I barely had experience with cars that looked like this from the few dimensions I'd hopped on before, let alone this. At least the car rod itself was mostly unproblematic. I could just zone out to the passing surroundings, pondering on how I'd possibly get out of this. At the same time, it was right when things were starting to click inside my mind about an escape plan that hey, it's our favorite song. Her mom interjected as all of them sang along like this was their hundredth time listening to it. They were passing it along to each other, too, and while none of them were great, I knew it did sound even weirder coming from someone who barely had a concept of what this bluey kid was supposed to sound like. Plus, it wasn't like I knew this song or its lyrics very well, the most I could glean from everyone else was vague mentions of dancing or something. Sure enough, they were passing it off to me, and all I could muster was a pittance of, la la la, la, la 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 broken bar jeez, that was bad, I thought I was tone deaf before you broken bar fortunately. I don't think everyone else minded that lackluster performance. I just breathed a sigh of relief that we were pulling into the party a broken bar. A broken bar party. Perhaps that sigh of relief should have been a gasp instead. From the banners it looked to be a sausage sizzle of some kind. Either way, it was a big social gathering and I certainly wasn't prepared. Following the rest of her family, it was certainly overwhelming hearing all of these chattering voices coming from people who were now much bigger than me. I'd never felt claustrophobia before, but I'm sure with how boxed in I was feeling from everyone else around me that the sensation was comparable to this. It wasn't long until we were led to where most of the other kids were and told to meet up with them. Alright, I think I saw, like, 
a couple people I recognized from the photos I saw of Bluey at home, I figured me approaching them would likely be preferable to vice versa happening. Oh, hi Bluey. One of them, a pink poodle looking girl, enthusiastically, greeted me. The other two quickly followed, and so did I with my own half-hearted wave. How was the wedding? I heard your uncle got married. A black and white collie looking boy asked. Okay, really getting to the deep cut questions. Are we? At least he isn't asking me any specific questions about what happened. I figured, you know a broken bar good? I trailed off. That didn't seem to satisfy them, but they thankfully didn't ask further questions. Ooh, would you want to play Ina the last friend of hers? This bespectacled beagle looking girl, I immediately cut off. I wasn't really interested in playing any game of theirs right now. Now, what to do instead? A.O. That bouncy castle. Dang it, why did I have to respond with that? Did I secretly like bouncy castles now? I never did. Oh, uh, maybe I really am becoming a kid. The line at least was non-existent, so we could get over this quickly. Unfortunately, however, as I approached it the crowd seemed to be particularly rowdy, especially this grand white girl who was screaming her lungs out before she even got on. Come to think of it. I recognized her from a couple family photos back at the house, and a broken bar thing. I sure hope I won't have to interact with her anytime soon. Upon getting inside, thought ooh a broken bar, yeah, I was quickly reminded of why I didn't like bouncy castles to begin with. Every bounce was like my brain was about to escape my skull. I was getting jostled so hard, not to mention. Everyone was still screaming like maniacs. The broken bar dot as I fell on my face for about the fifth time since coming into his contraption I could feel one of my teeth poke a hole in the latex. Just great, I thought as I hastily made my escape from that thing. As I saw the entirety of the structure come crashing down, the officials scramble to get everyone out and them start to apprehend that rowdy girl I was presumably related to. I think her name was Muffin from what I overheard. Only one thing was on my mind, this was gonna be a long day.